Today we are going to build on the foundation we learned from the first video. And we're going to go over some common motions that I use on a daily basis that you're going to want to have in your strategy toolkit. Entering and exiting insert mode can be a very overlooked motion, but you're going to be doing this many times during your editing. So you're going to want to make this as smooth as possible on yourself. And we have two options for doing this. The first option is caps lock as the escape key. Using the caps lock as the escape key is my personal favorite as it's a super accessible key that you can press. And it's easy to switch your caps lock and escape key on Linux and Windows. And you can do this with your shell config or your window manager configurations. And the second option for escaping into normal mode is going to be control left bracket. Pressing control left bracket will in fact exit insert mode as if you were pressing the escape key. This is a decent option as it requires no overhead to set up and it's a fairly accessible key binding to press. A few important line editing motions. We're gonna go over shift I and shift A. Shift I is gonna bring your cursor to the front of the line and shift A is gonna jump your cursor right to the end of the line. And with the added bonus of being already in insert mode upon arrival. Now these may seem a little bit trivial, but shift A is pure goat at this point. It's very common in software development to have to do something inside of a method call and then you need to quickly jump out and add a semicolon at the end of the line. Shift A is going to be your best friend with this and absolutely needs to be in your strategy toolkit. For quick above line editing and below line editing, our go to is going to be Shift O and O. Shift O will quickly bring our cursor above the line for fast editing, and O will similarly drop us below the line for fast editing. Now we should have quick editing for front of the line, end of the line, top of the line, and bottom of the line. Keep those in your toolkit. Let's talk single word motions and how to do this effectively. So I'm going to use the visual mode for example. If I do VIW, you notice that I'm going to quickly grab the whole word. This is actually a better alternative than for example doing a VW or something like that. So when you're doing single word motions, you basically want to use the IW version of that word. For example, instead of doing maybe a DW, a DW you can only really do at the beginning of the word. But if I wanted to do it in the middle of the word, I could just do a DIW and I can effectively remove the whole word. Alternatively, I can also do CIW. So the IW version of word motions will let you execute the motion no matter where you are inside the word. So my pro tip for single word motions and what I typically do is I'll use the IW version of something, maybe a YIW to yank that, paste that there. An important strategy we're going to talk about is bookmarks. And as you might expect from how it sounds, bookmarks are going to give us the ability to bookmark our cursor location essentially wherever we want in the document. Now this has become super useful because if you know that you're going to be going back to somewhere or you're going to be going back and forth between two points, you can easily set up some bookmarks between those. So to set it up, I can easily just press the M key and then I'm going to press a number or a letter of my choosing and I can go somewhere else and I'm going to press the M key again, another number or letter of my choosing and now if I want to jump back and forth between those bookmarks, I can press the tilde key that's left of the number one key. And then I can just press the bookmarks that I set to jump back and forth as needed. And if you have which key installed, you should get a nice little menu every time you press the tilde key. All right, ever visually highlight something and then your finger slips and you lose what you just highlighted? 
Introducing GV. GV will lock you down on your last visually highlighted selection, letting you feel at ease as you continue to neovim. Pro tip, while in visual mode, you can press O to jump the cursor to the other side of the visual mode. Just press O while in visual mode. Now, if you want to travel between braces like a pro, you can easily just press the percentage key. And as you notice, my cursor is going to jump between braces. This is particularly useful in highlight mode, as you can go into highlight mode and jump between the braces to grab everything inside. All right, this one is also very useful. If I do a colon and go down into command mode, as you can see at the bottom of my screen, you don't get access to Vim motions while you're down here in command mode. Well, now you actually do. If I do a control F, you're going to notice a little menu is going to pop up. I can use full Vim motions in this menu to basically type out what I want to do. I can press enter and that's going to execute what's in the command mode. Another interesting one, using shift and left bracket and right bracket is going to jump your cursor on a continuous block of text. This is going to make you want to structure your code in certain ways because it's just so accessible to hold the shift key and press the left bracket or the right bracket to sort of jump up and down. All right, and this should add quite a bit to your toolkit. Take some time to go over everything, absorb, practice, practice. If you did find this information useful, please consider liking and possibly subscribing.